All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can reroute this PCV hose using uh, some of these that you don't end up having to run a catch can on this side or reroute any potential oil or any other vapors going back into your intake manifold. Okay, so most of you are probably going to have um, this thing that's in here. So basically what I did before, since I have the AN fittings on here, is um, I just have removed this whole thing. And then this goes to the brake booster. And uh, if you do a fitting like this, you have to make sure that you keep a one-way valve that in the line that goes to your brake booster because if you pressurize it um, then you'll uh, do some damage to your brake booster which is not a good thing so anyway what we are going to be looking at is um, it's pretty simple tools that you're going to need for this just pliers 10 millimeter uh, for BK1 it's going to be a 14 millimeter uh, for a BK2 your um, you can either use the stock uh, PCV or you can remove it um, and use a basically a custom fitting which I've actually made one and I have some people that are going to be testing it out um, so what you have to do is take the o-ring uh, off of your stock PCV and put it onto this one and then that would just thread right back in. Uh, and then this converts it to a dash eight AN. And basically it makes the ID much larger for a lot more flow and it gets rid of this, I don't know if you can hear that, that little valve so that when you build boost, it doesn't pressurize it uh, into the head essentially. That valve will close. <clears throat> so, but anyway, for mine, so anyway, for a BK1, all we're going to end up doing is, uh, I'll do as much of this in real time. This hose is going to come off. Um, and then there's just this black foam piece that covers up your uh, PCV. We're just gonna take this one out. And here's the main difference that I'm gonna show you with between the BK1s and the BK2s. So the BK1, there is a, uh, a metal piece that is pressed into the valve cover. And you can't get in there and remove this. So I've had my, my valve cover off and all the baffling and everything like that that's in there is all ultrasonically welded. So what that means is that unless you want to do some serious cutting, you can't actually access this area to either remove this or drilling it out to a different thread size would be um, a little more than I want to get into for this. Uh, and with the PK2 it uses a much larger thread um, and everything is plastic and then it uses that o-ring to seal however uh, in order to take full advantage of that increased um, ID if you have a BK2 uh, 2.0 valve cover you there's still a piece of the valve cover inside that you would have to drill out to get the increase in flow. Otherwise, the smallest point is still going to be your restriction in flow. But either way, uh, in my opinion, it's still an upgrade over stock. So I've removed my PCV. Oh yeah, this is a, um, if you want to reproduce what I'm doing, this is a uh, 1 8 inch uh, BSP thread 
So it's a tapered thread, but it is different than an NPT. So if you try and run an NPT in here, it'll work the first time, but then it'll uh, gall up the threads or strip them, uh, and they won't be any good and they won't seal anymore. So what I did was I found a place online uh, that does a 1 8 inch BSP to uh, 3 8 inch barb. And what I will do is put this piece in here, and it's a swivel fitting. I know that we need some sort of sealant on this, but I just want it in place. Uh, and I believe that's a 12 millimeter if you order the same fitting. I tried to get a uh, 90 degree. Uh, one 90 degree hose so just to utilize this stock hard pipe that um, all the 2.0s have so what I'll do is I'll cut a piece of hose to length for this side and then where it comes off over here I will have it go to the intake so I haven't been running a catch can on mine because when I did run one I, they barely caught anything so I just run to the intake. However, the best way to do it would be route both of these lines. Uh, now, since they're on the same side, we can essentially mount a catch can basically anywhere you can find space over on this side. Uh, and instead of having to have two ports on your intake, you can just use one of them, route two lines into a single catch can, and then route one back to the intake. Routing a catch can to your um, pre-turbo on your intake is always going to be superior because essentially your turbo is always sucking air in. Uh, and when you just run it vented to atmosphere, the pressure is equalizing from, uh, from the engine just with atmospheric pressure. Uh, whereas this will help it draw out, especially like if you are um, at wide open throttle or any heavy throttle percentage, uh, the turbo is going to help suck all of that out and the catch can is basically the filter so that you don't have any uh, any vapors recirculating back into the system. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we just have a 10 mil up here. And then this plastic piece is what we're going to be removing. So there's an O-ring on here that will have to get removed and transferred over to, um, I've actually made a custom billet piece. And I'll show you what it looks like when it gets transferred over. But essentially, that billet piece is just going to get bolted down. Uh, and then we will have the hose running this way and it's going around to the intake. So now we don't have any uh, vapors that are going to have any oil or anything like that that are getting recirculated back into the intake. Okay, let's see if I can do this with one hand. So basically I took a pick and pulled the uh, O-ring off of... Um, the sock one. Uh, there we go. So, O-ring goes on here, and then mine's already got a little, um, a little bit of oil to lubricate it on there. Uh, plus, there's a little chamfer in here that helps you um, ease it into there. But I always recommend lubricating it. You don't want to end up with a uh, torn O-ring. So, we'll just kind of. Work it into place. There you go. And then, nice hot new hardware. Snug it into place. There we go. Now, uh, and the beauty, the the benefit of this being a billet aluminum here is well, one, it looks nice. 
Uh, and then two, if you ever need an additional port for, uh, I don't know, an intake air temp or, I don't know, you could probably adapt a map sensor to it. You could put you know, like a, uh, an AN fitting, a weld on fitting or a barb fitting. You can do whatever you need to um, or just leave it blank. So now you can see uh, that little foam piece that covered this up. I just cut it shorter and then just stretched it around after I tightened this up. Uh, just hose clamp and then I have a little adapter piece, piece which I show here. Or not an adapter, a splicer piece. Because I couldn't find a hose long enough. Because it needs to be like 20 inches long. Uh, and then have this like 3 inch leg. So it goes around to this piece and uh, oh I forgot to attach one but I have a custom intake so essentially all I have to do is run my hose from here to my intake and then I'll be done. So that's what we'll look like once everything is in place. Pretty simple.